Over the past decade, there have been some really amazing uses of facial recognition technology. It could be the future of flying. Facial recognition, confirming your identity, your flight information. Nothing has ever been simpler, more natural and effortless. Face ID. And some not so amazing uses. It's all part of the Chinese government's new social credit system, where people's daily behavior is monitored and rated. And the technology can single us out in real time as we go about our daily business, often without us ever knowing. But we haven't seen an accurate video actually explaining how the technology works. We wanted to see how good a computer is at playing Where's Waldo, but in the real world with a real face, so we can see how facial recognition works. As a human, when you look at a picture, it's easy for us to identify a face. We know it's circular, has two eyes, a nose, and a mouth. For us, it's intuitive. But how do you teach a computer how to identify a face? Well, first, you interpret the scene in a way the computer understands. We decolorize the picture, and we're only worried about the amount of brightness at each pixel. We can then look at the surrounding pixels and calculate a vector that shows the direction and intensity of the change in brightness. We can do this at every point to get a histogram of oriented gradients, or hog. All of this tells the computer that when there is a strong difference, there is an edge. We know from past faces what a typical face hog looks like. Now it's a matter of scanning each portion of the image to find a match. This is the first step to any facial recognition program, like our Where's Muna. We calculate the oriented gradients, then use a sliding window to find all the possible faces for us to analyze. Now that we have the hogs, we're ready to identify the landmarks on each face. Typically, researchers use 68 landmarks that correspond to points on the chin, left eyebrow, the nose, you get it. These are what the landmarks look like. Now we're ready to process the images with the neural network. But we'll get back to that in just a minute. <laughs> Here's an interesting problem. How can we tell that this face is the same as this one? Well, I'm easy to process. We take the hog, and then we compare it to the reference to identify the face region. But the hog for me is smaller and off-angle. There's an additional step we can take so we can orient both faces and better compare them. We can take the landmark data for the off-angle face also. Then we can scale and rotate it, so that way we can normalize it. This is the same method that Snapchat uses to overlay filters. This was a critical step in Where's Muna. All the different facial orientations first need to be normalized using facial landmarks before we try to find him. Here's the fundamental question. How do we tell two people apart? It's easy when they look different but there are 300 million people in the U.S. Comparing landmarks isn't enough here. This problem calls for a convolutional neural network. Take this picture of Bradley Cooper. It contains a lot of information. Each pixel is represented by three numbers, each corresponding to red, green, and blue values. For a picture that's 64 by 64 pixels, that's 12,288 data points we can work with. If we have a good training data set of 500 known images of Bradley Cooper, that's 6,144,000 data points, enough to find the specific features that make Bradley unique. To learn Bradley's face, we can start by filtering the image to find all the edges that look like this. Here's a look at where that edge is most prominent. This is called a feature map. We set the number of filters to be huge, each one generating a different feature map. A stack of all the resulting feature maps form a convolutional layer in the neural network. The interesting part about an architecture like this is that we can have another convolutional layer, which only reads the layer in front of it. We start to morph simple features into complex representations. There's one problem. Anytime we want to analyze a picture, we use a lot of computational power going through a network like this. So we reduce the area of these layers through a process called pooling, which averages over a larger region so that our model can be as compact as possible. This way, we get a mathematical representation of Bradley Cooper through a large network of convolutional and pooling layers. Based on the strength or weights of these filters, we can have the network output a score or a profile of Bradley. If George Takei is inputted, the network changes the weights automatically so that George's scores and Bradley's scores are forced to be different. 
Now, how does the network figure out what features are important in distinguishing Bradley versus George Takei? One obvious difference here are the wrinkles. When we feed the pictures of Bradley and George in, the network will adjust the weights automatically, learning that the wrinkles are important to have the scores far apart. It's hard to tell this from looking at the filters themselves, but this is the brilliant part, the actual learning aspect of machine learning. We guarantee that George gets a different score than Bradley, because we can tell the network that they're different people. The score should be very close for all pictures of Bradley Cooper, but it should be very different for people who don't look like Bradley Cooper. While we're training, if a new image enters the network and it's misclassified based on its score, then we adjust the weights of the filters so that all classifications are correct. There's a lesson here. The model is only as good as the training data. If we don't have enough pictures of people from different races, people with beards, people with wrinkles, it won't perform well in a general setting. The model we ran used over 3 million training images, and they're already labeled, so the computer knows which face is which. Here's a training image going through the network. You can tell the output gets more complex the deeper we go. As long as we have enough of Muna's labeled pictures and a large enough training data set, we should be able to find him. We took 10 Where's Muna pictures in New York City, and we set the computer up against 100 human participants. While facial recognition algorithms make some mistakes, in many cases, they perform as well or even better than humans. It's almost as if the algorithms know us better than we do.